to talk about isometric and isotonic muscle actions. Isometric, okay, would be something that we refer to as being like a static muscle contraction. Whenever, as an example, you pick up a dumbbell and perform a uh, bicep curl, perhaps you hesitate about the 90 degree of elbow flexion. You hold it, you hold it, you hold it, okay, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. All right, and this demonstrates a static muscle contraction, otherwise known as an isometric muscle action. Now, tension is developed in that muscle because it's tough to keep that thing there for a period of time, especially if it's, you know, a pretty moderately heavy weight. So we know tension is developed in that muscle, but there's no change in muscle length. So whenever we hold a contraction, whenever we statically contract a muscle, isometrically contract a muscle, all the same kind of thing. Now, other times, okay, you might think of a static muscle contraction in a different way. Whenever you helped a friend, maybe they wanted you to help them put up a, a wall hanging. And so you're the one that's going to hold it up there to see if it's in the right place, the right angle, the right level, whatever. And so that person's standing back there away from the wall and you're holding this, you know, mirror or whatever up here. And they say, move it to the left, move it to the right, but just hold it there for a second. I got to get a good eye to see if that's exactly what I want. Well, all this time you're performing static muscle actions or static contractions or isometric contractions of some of those shoulder flexors. Another one, because I've come from an athletic perspective, and perhaps you have as well, even if you've been in a gym class or a physical education class, where maybe you've been asked to do wall sits. So as you can probably imagine, knowing, okay, that you've been asked to do wall sits, you're going to put your fanning back against the wall, maybe a little bit of, you know, knee flexion about 90 degrees, hip 90 degrees, and you're just going to sit there. And chances are after, I don't know, some period of time, hopefully a, a long period if you're really strong, you're going to feel all this tension in your quadriceps femoris muscles. And you're going to say to the teacher or the coach, hey, can I get up? Can I get up? Because it's hurting. So you're developing a lot of tension in those muscles, but there's no change in muscle length. So that would be static contraction or isometric contraction. Well, let's talk about isotonic muscle contraction. There are two types of isotonic muscle contraction, concentric and eccentric. Now, concentric muscle contraction we're going to look at first. Let's go back to that example of a bicep curl. Pick up this imaginary bicep, or this imaginary dumbbell, pull it up toward your chest. That would be executing what we call a concentric contraction of, maybe as an example of one of the muscles, the biceps brachii, this anterior muscle in our arm. So the biceps brachii is concentrically contracting. A couple characteristics that demonstrate a concentric contraction. First one, the muscle is shortening. And as a result of that muscle shortening, it's bringing that dumbbell, okay, closer to the chest. So, muscle shortening. There will also be with a concentric contraction, a change in the joint angle. So imagine, here's the joint. If you imagine it in this about 180 degrees, if we elbow flex to this position, we've got 90 degrees. And so what happens, all right, we know when this biceps brachii concentrically contracts to lift the dumbbell toward our shoulder, we're having a decrease in this joint angle from 180 to 90 and so forth. So that's another characteristic. And the final characteristic to describe a concentric muscle action would be the fact that when we lift this dumbbell and the bicep curl, we're taking that weight or that load away from the center of the earth. We're going against what we call the pull of gravity. So three particular characteristics of a concentric muscle contraction is a type of isotonic one. We have muscle shortening, we have the joint angle decreasing, and we have this load going away from the center of the earth or against the pull of gravity. Well, let's talk about its opposite. Let's talk about eccentric muscle contractions or actions. Another type of isotonic contraction. Let's say we've got that dumbbell up toward our chest, okay? We perform maybe the half of our bicep curl, and now we're going to lower it back down to its starting point. In that lowering, what we're finding is that biceps is still contracting, still has tension in it. But what we know now is that muscle that was shortened by having this weight up by our chest, now that muscle's lengthening in a controlled fashion. So that's one of the things we know about eccentric muscle contraction. There is a lengthening of the muscle. It's still with tension, okay, but that lengthening of the muscle is gradual and with control so we protect ourselves. The other thing you'll notice is that in this case, if we look at the joint angle, that joint angle that was very, you know, minimal is now increasing. And pretty soon, okay, we know that we're back here to our 90 degrees. And now we're all the way back to our 180 at the starting point of our bicep curl. So the second characteristic of an eccentric muscle contraction is increasing the joint angle. And finally, you should probably imagine we talk about that, that uh, gravity or that pull of gravity from the center of the earth. 
And again, if we lower that load or lower that resistance down, okay, to the original starting position, and it wants to go back toward, okay, its resting point, or go back toward the center of the Earth. So we say this is, again, with gravity. That load is moving with gravity. So, three characteristics, of course, of eccentric contraction. You'll notice they're just the opposite of concentric. Eccentric contraction is lengthening of the muscle. We know that's increase in the joint angle, and we know that the resistance is going toward the center of the Earth or with the pull of gravity. Now, another way of looking at it, if we put all these kinds of muscle contractions together, is, and I'll be, you know, um, a little bit out here on a limb, I guess, by this example. Personal preference when I go into a public restroom is not to sit on the toilet seat. Unless, of course, I put, you know, my little, you know, toilet tissue down or whatever. So, a lot of times I'll go ahead and I'll just squat. Think of a squat as an example. You can think of it in that example, if that's too much for you, then, you know, put it in form of a just executed squat. So this is going to be the, my demonstration of my toilet. I'm going to move this back a little bit, okay? And so what I want you to think about, okay, is that if I perform a squat to that toilet, what I'm doing is, if you think of the body weight, I'm actually going down to sit on the toilet, okay, or hover over the toilet, and I'm using an eccentric muscle contraction of my quadriceps femoris, as an example, to control me, to protect me, so I don't basically break my butt bones on the uh, toilet seat. And then if I'm hovering, I'm hovering using isometric or static contractions of those same muscles, those quadriceps femoris. And if you hover here long enough, you will find, oh, that does hurt. There's a lot of tension there. And then when I want to get up, remember, what we're doing, we're shortening these quadriceps femoris muscles at the knee to allow us to extend our, our legs, our knees. And there's a concentric muscle contraction. So again, slowly lowering myself down with pull of gravity, lengthening these muscles, increasing the joint angle. That's an eccentric contraction of these quadriceps femoris. Hovering over, I'm still developing tensions in the quadriceps femoris muscle, but now I'm not changing the length. I'm just holding this position, static or isometric contraction. And then when I lift myself off the toilet seat or my hovering position, I'm shortening these quadriceps femoris muscles at the knee, so that I have knee extension, that's a concentric muscle contraction. So, you can take virtually any exercise that you might do as a physical person, leading somebody in a routine of fitness, or you yourself, analyze any of your uh, uh, workouts, okay? For every exercise you do, you should be able to identify probably an eccentric and a concentric muscle contraction. Chances are, if you're like me, I don't have a tendency to get much isometric or static contraction in uh, a lot of my exercises, and perhaps that's something I need to work on.